Yo, 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 what's up? How y'all doing? <laughs> I just flipped you guys off on accident. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, um, so in today's video, about to disassemble the LS. Well, I mean, this basically picked off from where we left off in the, the last video, I believe, as long as this was posted in the same order. Um, basically, yeah, it's gotta pull, I gotta pull all the pistons out, and I gotta pull the crank out, and then also the cam out, uh, pull off this uh, oil pump. Basically, just getting the block ready to drop it off in the machine shop. Hopefully, in this same video, we're going to be taking it to the machine shop so it could get um, hot tanked. Um, see if the, the um, if it needs to be... Um, God, I'm not good at this. We'll hopefully be able to see whether we need to actually deck the block. Um, I know for the heads, I'm not going to take them yet. I don't think... I think I'm going to do it separately just so that... Um, I at least get one thing at a time. Because I don't have the head package yet and I also don't have the cam. Hopefully, know what I'm doing here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But basically, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna take off all these nuts here. Well, I believe you gotta take all the studs and then the bolts. But I'm not 100% sure. We're gonna find out as we go. Um, and then I believe also on the side, there's these bolts here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is when I take them out, I'm actually just gonna re-bolt them in there. And I'm also I'm gonna mark them, each one of these, so I know exactly which side they go. So I'm gonna end up having to wipe these down. Um, as you see here on the pistons, I did label them. So this right here is the odd side, so one, three, five, seven. And then on this side here, it is gonna be two, four, six, eight. So I did mark them for when I do take them off and I am gonna be making sure to keep a track of everything. Uh, this here, this here, I have, I'm not sure what these are called. These are called the oil trays. And then also, this is what rests on the cam, which basically, I don't know if they're called, like the, the guides I don't know man honestly um, as you see here I have the oil pan bolts and hardware in this this cup I mean this uh, bottle the front timing well I call it a front timing cover even though it's not a timing cover it's actually like a sprocket cover or whatever um, and then also have the rear one so I am keeping it all organized that's all the stuff for outside of the block I kept it all inside of a box the oil pan basically the old one sloped this way and that's where my subframe is on my car so I had to use the uh, I believe it was a 2007 GTO, Pontiac GTO, I believe that's what it is, um, where it literally slopes to the front, but it's flat here and it goes straight up, and then, you know, that, that right there in itself is going to help me out a lot when it comes down to actually fit me inside the car. So as you see here, go ahead and lift this up. This thing's clean. Jeez. Nah, anyways, so the engine actually sits there and the oil pan if they had the old oil pan is sloped in that direction So it would hit this here this uh, uh the subframe in the front So basically the new oil pan is gonna make it sit right in that gap But you know because this is a whole new platform for me. It's kind of hard to like Know everything I'm talking about. I'm trying my best I've done a lot of research like a lot like some of you guys have sent me YouTube videos like hey watch this They did it and I'm just like I've already watched that hardly any YouTube videos out there that have been recorded uh, that I haven't watched yet um, And it's a good thing that I'm going ahead and put it actually make the, the videos about it because the fact that like There is a lot of questions that I didn't get answered that I had to go and find out myself And while I figure everything out I'm gonna let you guys know I'm gonna let my dad know so that he let, lets you guys know as well Just so you guys understand like exactly everything you need and also realize that there is a budget way of doing it. You don't have to spend all that crazy, crazy money um, in order to do an LS swap inside of the G35. So in today's video, we got this here. So this is how we're gonna help get the, um, the actual pistons out. If you guys didn't know, without actually having to bolt it, if you hit it hard enough right in the center, it'll just slide right out. So I'm gonna set up the tripod and show you guys what's going on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna do it the right way and I'm gonna make sure everything is done correctly. And then before installing it, everything's gonna be cleaned, everything's gonna be torqued down, everything's gonna have thread lock on it. Just cause you don't you don't want all stupid problems to happen when you could easily prevent it, you know? Sir. I believe if you unbolt that sprocket there, then you can actually take the old chain off and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Alright. There's your old chain and sprocket. So now, I'm pretty sure if you unbolt this plate here, it'll actually give you full access to the cam. But I honestly, I don't think I'm going to do the take out the cam yet unless you actually have to. I'm going to search it up real quick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Stop, you're giving people flashbacks from last video. Ooh, ooh. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dad, 
He acts like a monkey when it comes down to this thing. I don't know why. Because it's like old age and all. Let's not get that table because it kind of looks trash. Not get that because it kind of looks trashy. It's not to get the floor because it kind of looks trashy. Oh, darn. Can't get anything in this garage. All right, I'm just putting y'all right back to where you were because that was the perfect game. All right, so now I have this here to get this ready to actually set the pistons on. And then we're gonna try to take them off in order. But first, yeah, so basically first you wanna take off the pistons so that you then expose access to the crank. So then you can just take the crank out all as one. So, let's see, I believe that this is odds on this side, so this gotta be one here. Let me double check. All right, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and take this top one off here first, which is um, piston number one. Oh, darn. I need to label this stuff before I forget. All right, this is also something else I did. Don't tell my dad. What I do is I just put the old bolts in there and I just throw a layer of tape over it so that I know that those go there. Dun 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 dun. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I got all the pistons out, well, piston rods out, um, as you see here. Got them all laid out here. Um, I went ahead, and as you realize, if you could see, like, these freaking bearings are smooth, bro. Like, no, no grinds on nothing, dude. Those things are smooth like butter. Um, also here as well, a little, little oily, but dude, smooth, bro. Like on every single one of them, they're freaking smooth. So next one I have to check is the actual bearings in between here, like in between these sandwich plates. So those are the next ones. Hopefully they're good too, dude. And like, I've seen that, that's very, very good, especially because I did not get the car, this motor out of a running car. I ended up getting it from someone that took it out of a running car. So this is just, that's just proof to me that this is like in good condition. So next, I'm actually gonna end up taking the actual, um, the crank out and then after the crank, we're gonna be pulling the cam. So there's no specific way that you need to do it. And also I want to add, I also wanna add that I am not a professional. Um, never wanna claim that I am a professional, um, but the reason why I'm kind of like explaining everything to you guys, even though there's probably some of you guys out there that have done this a million times and even like going on to different engines and stuff. The reason why I'm putting it out there is just so that you guys can get an understanding of like actually how to do it. Um, because honestly, like it's nice to find a video that explains everything. And I honestly, I never found one. So it's probably a good thing that, well, why are they watching me? Yeah. Uh, Style. What's up, Josh? What's up, bud? What are, you, what are you doing out here, little Braven? Taking my little piston and rods out with my little engine. Dude, I am stoked at how good your bearings look. Yeah, I just like, thought I'm... <laughs> everything is... Butter. Like, dude, everything is just clean. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited to get the crank off. Yeah, that is one. The one thing now left to check is the uh, is the main bearings for the crank. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, looking at the piston. Dude, but, yeah, it definitely, it definitely is like, oof. Like now we it know it's in, now it we know it's look, clean. It doesn't look like that. And if you look at the like the the rods and everything, and like the crank in here, do you see how it's not like all gold? Yeah, it's not like, gold. Like it's tarnished. actually just fresh. Yeah, that, well, because whenever people don't change the oil often, yeah, the oil will get all nasty and it, it, it stains all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it looks like it was pretty well. It was either really low miles or taken care of like really well. You know? Well, either way, I don't mind. You know what yeah, I'm saying? No, it, it's, like, it's in really great shape. Man. Yeah, most definitely. Next is actually taking the crank out. And then um, I do want to, I was thinking about it. Should I saran wrap those? Or you think they're good like that and then just saran wrap that? Yeah, no, they're good like that. And really, you don't even, I mean, you're going to be taking it to a machine shop here soon, so. Yeah, it's not like it's going to be I sitting mean, saran, for a long time. Saran wrap is like whenever it's going to be sitting for a few months. You don't want it to get yeah. you know, rust on it. But yeah, no, they're, they're not going to be sitting that long. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you really need to wrap anything. All right. The exciting part. So, I was said, I did say this in the video. These here, these studs. Yeah. You switch these out, right? 
or are they okay to reuse? Because I don't know like the actual terms and like how you're actually supposed to do that. Because if I'm supposed to get new ones, then I will. Um, I don't know, man. We'll have to look it up. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. Because I know on like the on those like B series and stuff, and like in, like Honda engines and stuff, I know that. No, I've always reused my my main cap bolts and shit. Like I've, I've also heard like the stock ones are better than like aftermarket. I've also heard that. The ARPs are always good. Pretty healthy. Some some people like whenever you're going for like high power. Yeah. Like they'll they'll take these out and they'll drill them to put larger studs in. Yeah. Or even drill them at an angle. So that they're not straight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they're going at an angle so you have more strength that way or whatever. But yeah, and I honestly, I I'm not trying to go for no thousand horsepower. So Why not? Not yet. A thousand horsepower isn't hard to do on these things, bro. Really? Yeah. Dang. No, I think that's too much. <laughs> really, I'm serious. It's, it's, it's very obtainable to get like seven, eight hundred horsepower. Well, no, seven, eight hundred, but like. And and if you just put a little bit more into it, just add a little bit more boost, boy. You hitting freaking a thousand horsepower in my G35, bro. Yeah. That's gonna be crazy. Yeah, but but the problem is, is whether your transmission can handle it. Yeah. And well, then, I don't know if that. And then if the transmission can handle it, then is your rear end gonna handle it? Like. Yeah. It, it, it's a domino effect. Most definitely. That's why most of the cars out here do. Uh, most of the V8 guys out here all do roll racing. None of them do digs, cause man, digs they, only. What you talking about? Cause they put all the money into their engine, bro, but their their setup can't handle a dig. Everything goes snap, crackle, pop. Mm. <laughs> I might snap, crackle, pop a few things, but <laughs> as long as it's not the engine, I'm gonna be happy. Yeah. So the next step is actually to pull these caps off here. All right, I got all the outside diameter tens off. Clean off my dad's tools real quick so you don't yell. All right, now we can go ahead take. So now we go ahead and actually take off these uh, these nuts on it. Three. I don't know. Just the baggie. Like I said, these are all going to be cleaned because I'm not going to be able to put these back in there dirty because it's going to mess with my OCD. So these are all going to be cleaned. Right. Now the hardware bag for the uh, crank. So for the hardware bag for the crank is actually all in here now. So it's nice to keep them labeled now. Yeah, these bearings look just as good, bro. Yeah, bro. Those things are fresh. That's fresh too. Dude, that's exciting. It's healthy. That's the exciting part about it. Yeah, you can literally just slap this all back, like just gap your rings, slap it all back together, and be straight. Yeah, just after <laughs> cleaning it up, literally, it's perfect. I'm hope. I hope the inside of mine's just as good. Yeah, I most likely will be. If not, I'm just going to swap you out. <laughs> my, mine's already going to be in my car before you ever get that thing out here. I'm going to tear it apart tomorrow so we can take a machine shop together, dog. <laughs> you should have already been on that. All right, so the next step is actually to pull this cam out. So I got to take off this this cam. I don't know what this is called, but it's just like it's a block off plate to actually hold the cam in, in place. And then we're going to have to slide it out. We have to be very careful. All right. Here's that plate. Just have a little seal right there. Oh. Very gentle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's so many, so many things to rub it up on. As long as I don't drop it, I'll be fine. Alright. There you guys go. The full cam is out. We disassembled an entire block on one battery. 
<laughs> now the battery's flashing. Now I gotta set this somewhere and make sure to be very careful with it. This thing is for sale. Let me know if anyone wants it. Oh, did it, we did an entire block Bro, the, disassembly. This guy, this guy has taken apart an LS before me. <laughs> That's, I've, never, I've never disassembled an LS before. Bro, this is my first motor ever disassembling. All right, took a little recap section as they call it. I cleaned up the entire garage. <laughs> Well, I put all the tools away and everything, I cleaned up my mess, and then I put all the parts and stuff like onto the table there. Here the block is, it's completely ready for the machine shop. Um, then also decide when I get there, I'm going to have them actually look at these cam bearings and they'll be able to tell me for sure whether I need um, new bearings or not. Uh, they look pretty fresh to me, I'm not going to lie to you, so I doubt I'm going to need them. But, you know, it's always nice to have a professional opinion on them, especially because I really don't know much about these. Um, the way that other people would so I went through and I actually took out those Allen like those Allen style like block offs I know you, I think you guys know what I'm talking about uh, just into the water ports and stuff also took off this side here too um, because I want the whole thing deep clean all the way through it um, I don't want no area to be not cleaned uh, because you know this thing gotta be fresh you gotta be mint you gotta be perfect to go inside my baby girl so you know what I'm saying I don't know I'm going to be putting no dirty, dirty things inside of no girl. You know what I'm saying? So I got to get my own cleaned up. I also created a new Instagram just for the G35 content. Well, the G53 content. Um, is there a fire? Oh, there's a lot of smoke out here, y'all. Man, look, can you see that right there? I don't know if you all can see that, but there's a lot of smoke in the air and it smells like fire. I hope that everything's okay, you know? I don't want no one's house to be burning on fire. But yeah, bro, they just smoked out the whole garage. I thought maybe someone's barbecuing, but I came out here, look at that. Man, you can't even see it. Man, that's not coming from us, I know that. Let me just double check out back real quick, make sure nothing's on fire. Hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. The plan is to drop that off at the machine shop tomorrow. Um, but tomorrow's Saturday, so I doubt any of them are going to be open, sadly. Um, don't mind me. It's really bright now. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys supporting. Oh, and my new Instagram account. It's called uh, Slow S L W G 53 So Slow G 53 Um... You know, I had to do something. I had to do something. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to, trying to race these fools out here without them knowing it's LS swap. You know, shh, shh, shh. I gotta make it sleeper. So, I'll see y'all later. All right, peace. Look, guys, I knew it. Look at that. Oh my God. Jesus Christ, yo. That fire's bad, and it's right there. Dude, I knew it smelled like smoke around here. I thought it was gonna be like down the street. Nah, bro, it's right there. That's crazy. Hold on, let me grab my dad real quick. That's crazy.